everyone, and welcome to another design review from peerreviews.dev. Peerreviews.dev is a website dedicated to giving code reviews, design critiques, and portfolio and resume reviews to beginning designers and developers. It's really myself, Brian Robinson, and James Q. Quick looking to give back to the developer communities that kind of helped push us forward. We kind of want to haul everyone up behind us. So if you are interested in getting a design critique, a code review, or a resume review, head on over to peerreviews.dev. And from there, you can navigate on over to our requests a review contact forms, fill this out. It's going to go directly into a Trello board that James and I are keeping of every single person that is submitting a review to us. And we're keeping a, a schedule. We're going to hopefully release them uh, every every week. New reviews will come out, uh, probably multiple reviews every single week. So be sure to go ahead and go over and fill out that form and let us know if you want a review as well. We're going to go ahead and dig in, however, to today's review, which is Anderson Joseph's uh, website. Uh, it looks like a portfolio website. Um, I'm going to take a look at it. I am, however, not bilingual, unfortunately, so I'm going to use the Google Translate functionality in my browser and translate it over. If any text ends up looking weird, I'm going to go ahead and switch back so I can take a look in both ways. But this will just allow me to get a feel for your content. Overall, it's a nice little clean design. It's a little bit on the shorter side for the amount of content you have. Uh, I'd also say that I'm kind of missing an idea of a logo from the top left. I kind of like something up there to kind of anchor the page. Obviously, you're probably not a designer, you're probably a developer, uh, but having some sort of visual weight up in the top left is gonna be beneficial. So it could even be uh, andersonjoseph.ml, your domain. You could put that up there in a bold font and then maybe take a look at centering uh, this kind of banner area, right? Hi, I'm Anderson, uh, a student and developer who recently, and I actually really like this little bit of functionality here where you're pulling in some recent things that you've done. So it looks like you've recently posted a blog post You've recently read uh, a book. Yep, and that's, a, that's an Amazon link. Uh, and you have recently given a star. That's pretty cool. You've got your stars pulling in automatically from GitHub, I assume, there. Uh, so I like that functionality. I think that's really, really neat. I am missing a little sense of color on the page. Just all the all the gray on the white is getting a little repetitive for me. Uh, you got the blue links, but I might I might add a pop of color somewhere else. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything major. You could even use this blue a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, I think centering the the text for the for the headline up here would be nice, just to give it a little bit more space there. Uh, I'm a student of systems engineering, developer, back end, sometimes front end. Looks like you're using a sub uh, uh, HTML tag here. I might look at seeing if you can get that back up into the uh, into the main line of the text. You might be making a joke here about how like you know front end can be a little twitchy. I'm not sure. Um, I would say go ahead and just bring that into the line. I do like that you've got it kind of crossed out. Like I think that's that's a nice touch. I think you're maybe playing with too many things there uh, at one time. Uh, development of efficient application systems to help you and your team. And then we've got this, uh, in short, I make things work. So we got a little, a little joke happening down here with that, that glitch text happening, which is a, always a fun effect. Uh, I might look at making this area a little bit bigger to play up that effect. Uh, when I first saw it, it kind of freaked me out because I wasn't sure what was going on until I took a closer look. Uh, so I think some sort of making it a little bit larger than life down there might make sense. Or maybe making the entire, in short, I, it, just, it bounces around a little bit in a weird way. Uh, and then we come down here to some ways of getting in touch, it looks like. We've got your email link. Uh, I will say that's probably asking for bots to scrape it and and um, and you might wanna think about moving that to maybe a contact form instead. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and put that as another page on here, just might limit some spam you might end up getting down the road. A Twitter link. Um, GitHub link and your dev.2 profile. I will say that none of these icons are currently linked. I like to have both the icon and uh, the, the text for a link linked up. I think it provides enough space that allows a user to click wherever they need to to get to the link. Uh, I will also say that URLs can be a little bit of a dangerous game uh, in text. and they, they, they are long areas of not breakable text. So you're either going to want to use a word break kind of functionality down here uh, or maybe just move it to your handles, right? So Twitter would just be like at symbol Aragander. Uh, GitHub could just be Anderson Joseph. And then Dev2 could be just Anderson Joseph. Just, uh, just have the usernames down there and you're going to run into uh, fewer issues long term with the length of those lines. 
But yeah, overall, uh, quick hit kind of homepage. I like that. Uh, I would say your navigation could use to be a little bit bigger. The first time I saw the page, it got a little bit lost for me. I didn't actually see that navigation to begin with. Uh, just a l It needs to pull a little more focus up there just so I know where it is. I like to be kind of reassured about how I'm going to navigate. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go on over to the About Me page. All right, it is automatically uh, translating for me. Uh, but taking a look, I, I like that you're using some... Uh, some bold in here. It lets me kind of scan the uh, the text a little bit quicker. I would say it looks like you've got two paragraphs here. I'd like to see a little bit more spacing in between each of your paragraphs, uh, just so I kind of know where one ends and the next begins. But again, I really like that that bold uh, font face you're using. Uh, I might be careful with it. I'd say uh, I'm currently studying third year. Um, I wouldn't have the of bolded, I just have systems engineering. So when you're playing with it, highlight just the words that you need to highlight that a user is gonna get in just a snap, right? Of is not necessarily one of those words in this place, but uh, web backend developer, I think that's good bolding. Performance is good bolding. User interfaces, all that's good. And again, a little more space between your paragraphs here. Things that you focus on proficient in the following tools and technologies. I like that you're differentiating between your back end and your front end. I might put a label of some sort in these areas, right? So it's obvious to me, right, as a developer and designer, what these different technologies are. But maybe if you're trying to get in the front door of, of, a, of a company, an HR person may need to be able to scan a little bit easier when they're looking throughout it. Just kind of give me a quick label on those. And I will say that maybe these, uh, frame, I'm guessing these are just, you know, frameworks would be what we'd call that, frameworks or libraries, et cetera. Um, I don't know that they need to have this kind of color coding. I might just make them static text or bring in the actual logo treatment for them as well. It's a lot down there, so you might think about maybe just a bolded link, li list of links instead. Uh, but I like that you're differentiating back end, front end with the technologies that you are uh, proficient in. Um, let's take a look at this on mobile, see when you kind of break it. Okay, one thing to note when we go down to mobile here is I would take a look at the way you're doing your centered column here. Uh, I think that you're right now your uh, your pa your padding or your margin on your body is a little too structured, right? I might set a max width on my body area and then do a margin auto for the left and right so that that squishes a little bit faster. I, I like for your body of your content not to squish quite so fast. I think you can leave more room for that uh, and still have the same kind of effect going down to mobile. It's just that various like tablet-ish sizes, your content's a little too thin uh, for the amount of margins that you've got. See right about here, like this is the problematic area. Um, oh, and this actually gives me a good opportunity. It looks like you're using justified text. Uh, when you get down to a size this small, uh, I usually recommend that we don't do uh, justified content, right? Uh, text align left, text align right, justify, ends up giving you these kind of weird white spaces. Um, and no one really gets that upset about a ragged edge to their content, right? It's not that big a deal. Uh, so I almost always recommend just do a line left uh, as your text alignment. Uh, the, the nice clean lines is something to strive for, uh, but the weird gaps in your text are almost always gonna come in. And I think that in, in the end, the readability is better with a ragged edge than with text align justify. Uh, but overall, I, I like it. Uh, I might put a little bit more spacing in between these two boxes for your back end, front end. Uh, just a nice little little margin in there. Uh, maybe give a little bit more room between your back end and front end and your frameworks as well. Let's take a look at your projects page. All right, we got kind of a simple card style. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing them go like two across, do like a, a little simple grid there. Uh, but I like your detail expands. I think that's nice. Uh, looks like you're using them for the technologies you used. Uh, so let me kind of look at all these. Yeah, I might, instead of calling them details, I might call them technologies used or something like that just to give uh, everyone an idea of what they're about to get when they click on it. Uh, I wouldn't be against this amount of content just being out in the open either. I don't think it's too long. Uh, I think that it's gonna benefit users reading it right off the bat instead of having to interact with it. Although you are showing that you've got this interactive ability, so that's not a bad thing either. So yeah, I like all that. And then let's take a look at your blog. Okay, okay, so it looks like, yeah, these are our each uh, dev.2 link, uh, and you're mimicking their style, which I think is a, is a nice touch, making sure that people kind of know where they're going when they get over there. So when I click on this, I'll get some similar styles on the page that I go to. Uh, I like that you're automatically pulling your, con your, uh, your comments and your interactions there. I think that's a nice touch. Uh, I will say, 
Um, I would love to see the entire area clickable. I think that just having your headline clickable is going to make users a little bit more frustrated as they get here. I'd make the entire area clickable and I'd give a little bit more marginal space between each one there just to make it as obvious as possible where all the clickable spaces are. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a really clean uh, little site. Again, I'd maybe bring some sort of logo element to the top left of each of these pages, just just to give that kind of anchor that I'm in the same place every single time. It doesn't have to be anything major. Just do a nice type treatment around your URL and uh, AndersonJoseph.ml. Just put that up there. Maybe a 24, 32 pixel. Uh, size font up there, maybe a bold weight, and that's gonna take care of a lot. Maybe even put that in a color and that's gonna give that pop of color that I was looking for on the other pages. Um, but yeah, uh, I would say I would say kind of look at those little polish areas, uh, bring a little pop of color in, uh, and then kind of go from there. So I, I really, really appreciate you sending your site in, Anderson, and uh, I hope that you take something away from this and you can implement some of these pretty quickly. Uh, again, if you are interested in a uh, in a design review like this, please, please, please go on over to peerreviews.dev. And from there, you can fill out that contact form. And you can also take a look at all the other uh, design code and, pres uh, and resume uh, reviews that James and I have done over there. We're building up a library. I think they can be very, very useful to a lot of people. Uh, so again, peerreviews.dev. And while you're here, if you're on uh, YouTube, be sure to click that uh, that like button and that subscribe button down below. If you're on Dev2, go ahead and click that little heart button down below and be sure to follow my Dev2 account as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and bid you adieu and I will see you on the next design critique. Thanks very much.